friends, to give you a brief discussion about what is kinetics, may the force be with you. Kinetics is the study of the impact that different kinds of forces have on mechanical systems. In this context, we have our body. Beyond seeing the ball spinning, kinetics offers insight into the how and why the ball is spinning. The secret of movements. Behind every movement are the principles and components that affect it. Concepts like inertia, mass, force, weight, pressure, volume, density, torque, impulse, displacement, distance, and center of gravity are the backbone of movement. We have number one secret of movement, inertia. Inertia is the concept that states that object tends to want to stay in their current state of motion, whether you are still or moving, until other force acts on them. A bowling ball sitting still on the floor, for example, will stay that way until another force, a push by a bowler, acts on it. The same holds true for a football flying through the air. It will remain in motion unless other forces like gravity, air friction, or wide receiver make it stop. Inertia is an object's resistance to change. The amount of inertia an object possesses is directly proportional to its mass. The heavier an object is, the more force required to change it from its current state. Mass Mass is the amount of matter contained in the object. Not all objects of the same size have the same amount of mass and the same weight. A ball ball, for example, is about the same size as a golf ball. And a golf ball weights more than the ping pong ball. So in this context, the golf ball possesses more mass, making it heavier. The force. The heavier an object is, the more force is required to move. Force is the push and pull that acts on a body or object. The formula for force says that its products equals that of its mass and its acceleration, or force is equal to mass times the acceleration. Things like gravity, wind, and water are all forces that can act on you or other objects. The center of gravity. Center of gravity is the area within an object or body that is positioned at the middle of the object's mass. The center of gravity exists regardless of an object's position and is the point which you measure motion and the effects of any applied external forces. When biomechanics investigate motion in a gymnast, for example, they can concentrate on the gymnast center of gravity, not on her arms or her legs. Weight. How much an object weighs is determined by the amount of gravitational force being applied to it. This is why you weigh less on the moon, which has less gravitational pull, than on earth, which has more. Weight is considered a body's relative mass or the center of the earth because it is directly related to gravity. Torque. Levers are rigid systems that turn about an axis. To turn, levers rely on torque. Torque, the turning effect of force, is dependent on the application of an eccentric force, a force that is applied to an object but is not oriented with the center of rotation of the axis. The more torque applied to the axis of rotation, the greater the turning effect of the force. Impulse. Forces can be applied to objects in varying amount of time. The impulse is the amount of force applied during a unit of time. A large force may have a relatively insignificant effect on an object if it is delivered only for a split second. 
Conversely, a fairly small force may have a great effect on the object if it's delivered continuously over time. Suppose, for example, that you made the mistake of kicking a medicine ball, a large, heavy, solid ball. It's really hard. You probably experienced a great deal of pain in your knee because the ball didn't move. If you had used a lesser force and applied it over time, you would have discovered that moving the ball across the weight room and out of your waist was relatively easy and pain-free. Velocity and acceleration. Forces are often translated or transferred to objects. To fully understand the effect of force application, you need to explore the delivery of the force, its speed, and the direction in which the force is applied. Velocity is the quantity that represents the speed and direction of a body or an object. A concept directly related to velocity is that acceleration, acceleration is the rate of which an object changes velocity. Every movement has a speed component. Many are slow and some are very fast. This speed in relation to movement's direction and how it may change can have significant influence on the resulting force and its effects on an object. What a load! Different types of forces can be delivered to the body. The effects of the forces on the body are referred to as mechanical loads. By understanding the types of forces and their effects on the body and its structures, you can understand regular function. We have number one, compression. Compression refers to an axial force. This is a force directed along the longitudinal axis of an object that results in squeezing or freezing. Did you know that in the morning, you are typically taller than you are at the end of the day? You can think compression for that. During the day, you're upright, and gravity and your body weight compress you all day long. You actually shrink over the course of a day. Tension. The pulling of force of an object is tension. The muscles often apply tension as they pull on bones to make them move. In fact, the many bumps or, or what we call as the tuberosities on your body are a result of muscle pulling on the bone. Shear, a force directed perpendicular to the longitudinal axis of an object is a shear force. The result of a shear force allows one portion of the object to display in relation to other portions of the object. Shear forces often result in the bone fractures. If, for example, a force is delivered to the shin when your foot is fixed to the ground, one portion of the shin may be displaced in relation to the other. Bending. Bending involves the combination of tension and compression when a non axial force is applied to an object. Bending of force. In other words, when one side of an object experiences compression while the other side undergoes tension, it bends. Torsion. Torsion when one end of an object is fixed and it experiences twisting at its longitudinal axis. Torsion, of course. Injuries that involve torsion are pretty common in sports, especially when the playing surface, especially when the playing surface has a lot of traction. Combined loads. A human body experiences a number of different types of loads, what we call as the force application. Simultaneously, during many activities, combined loading occurs when more than one type of load is delivered to an object. Combined loading is the most common in the body. Newton's laws of motion. 
Throughout this discussion, he explained forces and the effects they have on objects, including the human body. In a nutshell, inanimate objects move because forces are applied to them. The body moves in the same manner. Although human bodies don't commonly crawl around or fly through the air like balls do, and they move or they do move because forces both internal and external are applied. What are internal forces and external forces? Internal forces are the forces generated within the body. For example, when muscles contract, they administer a pulling force to the bones that results in movement. External forces are force originating from outside the body. For example, when you fall, you do so because you've lost your balance and gravity pushes you down. Force application and the subsequent movement or lack thereof is dependent on Newton's three laws of motion, which govern the principles of all types of motion. Newton's first law, the law of inertia. The first law of motion states that an object at rest or in uniform motion, no acceleration, will remain at rest until acted on by an outside force. Because this law represents an object's resistance to changes in its current state or the motion or still, this law is commonly referred to as the law of inertia. Think about moving a heavy object across the garage floor. You probably noticed that getting the object moving takes a lot more force than keeping it moving. The higher force needed to first move the object is an example of inertia and the object's resistance to the movement. Newton's second law, the law of acceleration. The second law of motion states that the acceleration of the body is directly proportional to the force acting on it, but inversely proportionate to the mass of the body. What this means is that moving a lighter object is easier than moving a heavier one. If, you're, if you've ever had to move to a new residence, for example, you can easily appreciate this law. For example, I've been seen to end up with the boxes that you have more mass in them and that require exertion of more force. Newton's third law, the law of action and reaction. Newton's third law states that every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. How do we translate this? Whenever an object exerts force or the action, and to another object, the contacted object exerts a reaction force that is in the opposite direction and of the same magnitude. Think about an arm wrestling contest. If both competitors are of the same strength and therefore exert the same amount of force, then, then the net movement is zero. However, as the force exerted by one of the competitors lessen, because this competitor may be, you know, fatigues and weakens, the force, the force exerted by the opponent increases and he wins. Sometimes, the reaction isn't as obvious because we tend to think of inanimate objects exerting anything. So thinking about what happens when you walk or jump may help you grasp the concept. During either of this task, you push down against the ground to propel yourself forward. When you push down, the ground pushes you back against you with the same force, which enables you to move forward or jump up into the air. The discussion tackles the secret of movement, the types of forces, and the Newton's laws of motion. That's all for my discussion documents. I hope you've learned something. Thank you for listening and watching this video.